Welcome to season three of Creatively Speaking. I'm your host, Leanna Weller-Smith, the founder of Weller-Smith Design. In this episode of Beyond the Binding, I chat with Susie Mordo, an award-winning event planner turned wellness coach and author of her positive affirmation, Feel the Love card deck and Love is gift book. Susie walks us through her publishing experiences and offers insights into the practicalities of product fulfillment and the challenges that come along with it. We talk about warehousing, shipping, and the ever-changing and complex world of Amazon for the self-published author. I have known Susie for many years and had the privilege of working with her on both of her products. Her curiosity and dedication to sharing her message and products pushed her to figure out the often confusing world of product fulfillment. This episode shares her insights to help you in your fulfillment journey as well. So let's get started. Hey, Susie, welcome to the Creatively Speaking Podcast. Hi, Leanna. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm so thrilled um, to chat with you because we have a lot to talk about. Uh, You and I have been working together for quite some time. I think we've known each other. It has to be a good 10 years now at this point. I think so. I think 2014. Oh, my gosh. I think it could have been before that we met. We probably didn't start working together until, yeah. 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 So well, it's been quite some time and um, we've we've done a lot of cool things together. So, um, you know, this podcast, this season of Creatively Speaking, we're talking about, we're calling it Behind the Binding. And we really want to talk about all the other things that go along with book publishing or product publishing. And, you know, you have created a couple of different products. So mm-hmm. I would love for you to just introduce yourself, um, let everyone know who you are, what you do, and then we're going to really dive into the products, how you're fulfilling them, and kind of go from there. All right. So I'm Susie Mordo, and I am a multi-passionate entrepreneur. People always say, what is that? And I'm an event planner turned wellness coach, you know, lifestyle, personal development, all of that. That is like my sweet spot. But I also have this creative side to me that loves to create passion projects. And that's where we have connected. I've connected with Liana and her creative genius. There is nothing more fun than working with Liana um, creating these things, which I'm sure we're going to talk about today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the first product that we worked on together was a card deck. It was a like a positive affirmation deck. And I'm just curious, even, you know, with that product, what was the vision behind creating it? So back when I was on my own sort of personal development journey, you know, I was learning a lot. And one of the things that in, in amongst decks, like you'll hear about tarot decks and spiritual card decks, but I had this kind of feeling or this idea inside before decks were like a big, big thing. I think they're probably a little bit bigger now of creating this positive affirmation deck. It was all kind of the messages I learned along the way. I went through a big like weight loss and life transformation. And it was kind of the messages and the positive things that I learned, universal truths that I learned along the way that helped me on my journey. And I was just hoping that it would help others. And it was kind of a low tech, but high touch, high design and who better to execute than you. Yeah, that was a fun project. And, you know, that was one that was like a, a goal of mine is to to work on a deck. I really wanted to. So we had a lot of synergies there. And mm-hmm. with the whole weight loss story, like I had gone through my own transformation. Um, so it was a really fun product for us to work to, on together. And I love the way that it turned out. Um, it was very custom. I'm showing if you are on video, you'll see I have a little custom deck here have a version of visuals you can see it Mm -hmm. Um, and these were so fun to put together Um, but you know one of the biggest things aside from the whole process of making this deck is actually how do you fulfill these products and that's what I really I want to dive in today you know with you about is really how how you actually ended up getting these into people's hands Um, before I kind of dig into that piece. I do also want to mention, you know, this this product really kicked off, 
your Feel the Love brand. So from this, you really built out this brand. And we'll talk about another product that came from it and some of the other things you're doing, um, mm -hmm. because I do think it's all kind of tied together um, because you have a bunch of different types of products and they're being fulfilled different ways. So it's very, very interesting, um, the shop and the items that you're selling now. Um, so when you, when you got the, you know, these, the decks, you know, you received a big shipment. There was 2,500 pieces. And um, how did you approach the, that part, which would be fulfilling and distributing this product to those who are purchasing it? So that was my first round of creating a product, product virgin, so to speak, right? And um, I knew they were coming in. And, you know, when you talked about the decks, you're like, oh, they're this little. Like, oh, that's not going to be a big deal. But 2,500 of them are two pallets, right? It's, it's a lot. And they the way it gets, you know, shipped over and how it gets delivered was certainly bigger than I thought. But I had a um, mom that lived nearby and had a big garage that didn't have lots in it. So I, you know, warehoused a bunch of space. And I felt like at that time, because I didn't know any better, right? When you know better, you do better. But I didn't know any better. I, sure, I can fulfill these. I'm going to sell them on Amazon. I actually pre-sold a bunch of them. So I had taken orders. I was getting my labels ready. I'm going to ship them out. I'm going to just do it all myself. No big deal. And you know, I learned fairly quickly that, you know, it's, it is a big deal. There's a lot of kind of work, time and effort. And when you're working on other businesses, or you've, you've got another business and this is kind of like a side hustle or passion project. Every time you turn around to fulfill an order, it's taking you out of what you're doing day to day. Yeah. And you were really busy at that time. I mean, you were, like you said, you were running your event business and you had, you were, you know, on fire. So lots of things going on there. And then you had this and constantly having to fulfill them. So when you decided that you didn't want to actually just fulfill them on your own and you started looking into other options, did you, did you come across Amazon initially? Did you look at any other options for this particular product? I only knew about Amazon. I didn't know enough then. And I don't even, back then, I mean, that was what, like 2015? It may have been different back then, right? I don't even, right. It was 2015. I think there really was only Amazon. Maybe there, there was something else, but that's where people went. If, and it, for me, um, if I was on Amazon, that gave me credibility. So what I did is I went on and I started investigating what would happen if Amazon fulfilled it, right? That you order and then it comes in that Amazon box or you can also do merchant fulfilled, fulfilled by merchant FBM, and um, or we'll say fulfilled by me. <laughs> so I ended up choosing that because the fees involved, you know, let's start, honestly, if we're going to start with all of it, pricing, yeah. we ordered 2,500, like I, I was reverse engineering the price of what I wanted to charge from the beginning. So I needed to make sure I could produce it at a certain amount that when I you know, double the price to sell it. You know, there's there's a wholesale price and then there's a retail price that I would be able to double it for wholesale. They could, I could then do retail and it would all kind of make sense. So when you, what you don't always factor in is how much it costs to list on Amazon monthly. So you really have to have sales to kind of warrant that or you're just going to, you know, go like it's the cost of doing business. And then how much they take out to fulfill it, to get that, to make that easier. And I just wasn't willing to spend that extra money because I already went, <clears throat> are we going to be able to do this? Right. So I, so I did it. I would have uh, my assistant for events, help me out. I would have my kids help me out. Like whatever we needed to do, we just did it. So when you set it up, like how hard was it? Like, like, was there a, like, did you have to prove anything? Did you, or like, aside well, from, like the banking information, I think that you would probably have to attach to it. Well, you did, you know, I did, I don't know that it was required that it had to be a business account. It probably did, but I did have one. Um, you know, the big thing with the way they list and the way you have products was, and you really helped me through this, was like your ISBN number, right? You have to have these numbers and that's how they list it. And that's how that's your product, one of the 4 trillion, you know, products on Amazon. Um, and then you get assigned a customer number. And what happens is it isn't honestly easy to do it. You can do it, but it's not that there, there's a lot of words. There's a lot of like fine print. There's a lot of, I'm not sure, am I supposed to pick this or that? And so it did, there are lots of videos now that you can watch. There are people that will help you list. You can hire somebody to help you with that. 
Um, but I was always a little jaded. Like I didn't want people in my account. I didn't want to give people my banking number. So it took me a little bit of time. And once you did it and it was up and listed, you can um, edit fairly easy. That part of it wasn't so hard. But you, you have to create an Amazon seller account. It's not your regular Amazon account that you know you order stuff in. It's a seller account, which is something separate. So those are different tools that come with it. Does it keep track of inventory at all? Yes. Or it, oh, it does. It, mm -hmm. it keeps track well, of it, it keeps track of the inventory you put in. So like if I, you know, again, if I were sending Amazon, let's say 500 decks, they, they would be keeping that inventory. I'm assigning the inventory. So if I have 2,500 decks and I put in 1,000, knowing that I can sell 1,500 anywhere else, um, it'll keep track of that inventory oh, where, from wherever you start. That's cool. So, mm -hmm. but, so then you are giving everyone an Amazon link. They can buy it just like anyone else does when they go to Amazon. It shows up just as a regular listing as well, correct? Correct. But what you don't have initially is Prime status, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, some people just shop on Amazon Prime. And what they want to do is they want to ensure that you are a reputable merchant. And what that means is... When, when somebody puts an order in, you have to have that out in the mail within 24 hours, right? Like quick. And so they need to, and what they did, which does make it easier, is you can buy shipping through Amazon. So as long as you've printed the label from them within 24 hours, then it appears that it's been shipped, right? Oh, okay. So, so you don't have to. Use... That's when the, the, the package has been created, I guess. And, Correct. And then shipped. They're counting that. Right. You don't have to put, buy from them, but they kind of make it, it's a little bit like you kind of have to, because to figure out how to put in your own, you then have to create the label. You have to type in those, the shipping code, like they need to make, be able to track it. So did you do your own labels at first and then graduate to Amazon labels or did you always just use the Amazon? Either way, you still have to print out the label. You still have to print out the label. You have to print it out, but I was using, I think maybe stamps.com or something. Oh, okay. So you, you, you started with a different started a with a different, a different service first and then you moved over to Amazon. And but but honestly, Amazon gets great pricing. Oh, that's well, I would hope so because yeah. I mean, geez, yep. they, I mean, they deliver on Sundays for crying out loud. Exactly. <laughs> they better get good, good rates. Well, that, and that's good to know too, because I mean, shipping in this day is, I don't know. I feel like it's just, it's so hard to do and it's so expensive and at least you get, a, you know, some kind of break um, on that side. What, and you're putting in the dimensions, the weight, and you're taking your package, you're weighing it, you know, and, and that's kind of, you know, what that looks like. And then it's media mail. Like when you're doing stuff that books, you're not paying the regular um, rates. You're paying media mail rates. Right. Say somebody ordered one and you were fulfilling it. Like, you know, the order comes through from Amazon. You received the order. And say you wanted to put it in a bigger package. Like, so say you have, do you have different prices? Can it be on the fly in terms of like, say you wanted to include a couple other things in the package aside from the one, the item that they bought, like there's going to be, maybe you're giving them buy one, get one free. And maybe, maybe there's some things that you're doing specials. Um, are you able to then it, it, I guess it's fluid. I guess that's what I'm asking is. Yes. You, you can change the weight. You can, you know, it, it's assigned, like when you first put in the deck, you're putting in the size, the weight, whatever. So they're calculating based on that. But when you go to print, they're not printing it immediately. You can adjust the weight if you were like, oh, it's in this size package, this, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's, okay. That's cool too. So you can, you can kind of adjust it as needed if, right. if you want to. If you want it to be a special package, it can be a special package. It, all those packages all are those, yeah. I, I always stick things in there as well, like postcards and stickers and thank you. And I'm stamping the package, you know, feel the love because I can, because it's not coming from Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think that makes it definitely more personal, personal touch. So then once you had the, the blue deck, we're going to call it the blue deck, you then graduated to a second deck. And was it a little bit easier then to kind of get it? into the system rather than the first one? Absolutely. Once you, so once you have your seller account, and by the way, having that seller account and selling on Amazon, there's a monthly fee. So, right, that's, and that monthly fee, if I understand it correctly, I have, uh, I actually have four things, but three products that I sell under that Amazon, I have four, because I've got the, 
the book on demand, whatever. But um, it's that same monthly fee for all of it. So oh. the first one, the first one's the hardest, right? Because you're paying if you're paying roughly forty dollars a month, not quite, you know. But um, I'm a rounder. Roughly forty dollars a month. You want to make sure you've got sales that not only justify what you're selling, but um, that fee as well. Which is why I didn't want to have them fulfill it, because then it's even more money going it's into that. You know, like, what if I don't? You know, what if I'm just in the red? I don't like that. Right. So, so you have the two you can decks duplicate on it. There. Right. But I've got two decks. So then now you put now you got the pink deck on. So you're duplicating it, and then you're changing the assets around. Like, what does that look like? So, and the pictures and all, and you can upload videos, you can upload pictures, you can customize that selling page, you know, as you like. Yeah. And so with the, the seller account, then I know you also have like an author account. Correct. Different. There's like Amazon is like this web of. A lot. Of, of so many things. There's so many things you can do with it. And mm -hmm. it's, it gets so confusing if you're just kind of jumping in, but they all tie together. Correct. They do. And so under your name, like if it's here's the deck and it was made by Susie Mordo, then you click on Susie Mordo, you go to the author page. That's done, I believe, in KDP, mm -hmm. which is um, their publishing. Their print on demand, yeah. Their print on demand, right, their, their own publishing. So exactly. So from there, then you can list all your products. And sometimes people just put their seller page up. They, like, they market that yeah. instead. So were you that able to money. connect these to your, to the decks to your... Amazon author page as Correct. well. Yeah. Did it automatically pull them in, or did you have to? Did. Did? I think, I, if I remember correctly, I think they it automatically pulled them in. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Because you do have you have two other products, like you said. So you've done all the all these different things, which is great. The mm -hmm. other piece which you did on your own is you have a print on demand product. Right. And that then is part of this whole ecosystem for you then, right? It's showing up Correct. on your Amazon account for your Author Central, I think is what it is. And then mm -hmm. your seller account, is it showing up in there too? Correct. So you can look um, look at it under books. I mean, my seller account, when you, when you go into Amazon and type my name, I believe they all four come up mm -hmm. like that. Like that's if you're looking by name versus by product. Yeah. And that KDP, I just really wanted to understand how it all worked. So it's a, it's a low content book. It's not meant to be this beautiful, um, creative extravaganza, which is what the other one is, which we worked on together. Yeah, but it is, it is interesting to, to test it and exactly. see what, what the possibilities are because a lot of people either only know one or the other, but you know all of them. Like you know all, there's like these, you know, all these different pieces to the Amazon puzzle that you've, you've experimented with, which I think is, is great. So then mm -hmm. the, the next piece that you have on there is the, the next product from the field of love line, which is mm -hmm. your love is book. So I'll mm -hmm. hold that up. So people that see the video can see it. Beautiful. Super fun product. I loved working on this so much yeah. because it, it is so me. Um, in that it's graphic, like it, every it's single spread is different. Every single page is different. All these beautiful um, sayings from different people about what love men means to them. It's a very beautiful tribute just about, you know, what, how different people view what love is to them. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're filming this on Valentine's Day, which how fitting I know. And then, <laughs> and on top of it, it was funny cause I got a story, um, on my phone the, like this morning and this was your announcement came out last year so it's been one year since you've had this book mm -hmm. um, this is again another custom printed product just like the card deck so you also received another 2500 pieces for this product mm -hmm. um, but now it's a book and so it's so now you have the two decks you have a print-on-demand book and then you have a hardcover product. So this, this, I think opened up some other ideas for you in terms of, okay, I've got the decks on here. I'm still fulfilling them. I'm going to be getting another product. And do I want to fulfill both products? And how is this going to work? I'm assuming those are the things going through your head. But I mean, 100%. what really got you to start thinking about the process that you currently had with your fulfilled by me merchant mm -hmm. um, situation setup that you had going on? Well, 
I still wanted a fulfilled by merchant. I did not want to pay Amazon. Like the fees just keep going up. It's like taxes. They keep going up, keep going up. I did not want Amazon to fulfill it. I don't have a massive network. Like I've got a good network and I got a good selling situation, but not, I'm not like the upper echelon author where like it doesn't really matter and they've got 19 people on their team behind them. So what did I do? I, you know, I know other people that have written books, sell, sold books, and I started talking to them. How, how do you fulfill it? Because I really didn't want them in my garage and I didn't want to have to be running around. I wanted some of them here. I do like to, you know, I do sell people right, you know, in person or if I'm, if I'm doing an event and I have them there and I want to be able to hand them out or sign them or whatever that is. Um, I, I wanted some, but I just didn't want them all. So what I wound up finding, and I spoke to different um, publishing houses or marketing houses, I, everybody's not even sure what the actual like title of their business is, but everybody wants their hands on it. They want to market it for you. They're a publisher, but they're not really a publisher. They're not, pu they're not actually, like, I've, we've published it, right? We've got it. <laughs> Now we have to market it. And it just felt cost prohibitive, really. Like it was in tens and twenties and thirties of thousands of dollars, right? Like really a lot of money. And I'm like, I don't know, like I'm not seeing it. Maybe round two, maybe if it takes off, but that's like not, it didn't feel congruent with how, why I created the book and how I was gonna do it. So I found um, through talking to people, it's kind of like a mom and pop shop. It's a family owned business that does distribution. Right. So that either you do publishing or distribution and like never is it just one, like they want the whole thing. Yeah. So that, that was the, that was the big part. And so they do distribution. They were located um, in Chicago. I've never met them by face, but we've talked a bunch and I knew someone else that was using them and what they do. So I ended up when it was coming from overseas, I had the entire, you know, the pallets, both of them sent to them. And then if I wanted books here, I had them, I had them send them to me. And, um, what's awesome about that is that they're checking in. I mean, that, I guess this is what they do for different products and different people. They're checking the Amazon account. I'm sure they're getting alerts. Um, they get into my Amazon seller account. So they're now have a login, a, a, you know, aspect to this and they fulfill every order. So it comes in, it's still fulfilled by merchant, not by Amazon but they're doing it. And now I pay them storage and then per piece that gets sent. That's amazing. That When you told me about that, I I knew I needed to learn, like learn more because I feel like that is just like you said, like a lot of the companies, if it's like a hybrid publisher, they do it all and then they'll take care of you know your distribution side. Um, and there aren't, you can go with it just a regular warehouse, but then they may not be set up to do the fulfilled by merchant, which that's a, that's definitely another skill set that needs to happen with the people that are there in the warehouse because all yeah. warehouses aren't created equal. So no. it's, it's gotta be like, you know, making sure that you go with the right service and making sure that they cover what you need. But I also, I want to circle back before we dig too much into that piece around okay. something you and I, you had even mentioned to me, like before we started recording, which was, you know, when it comes to that fulfilled by merchant, you know, you are the one that's fulfilling it. There's a timeline on it. Like, so there's like that 24 hour sort of period, but you also had, you had mentioned about you know, having to, if you're going away, what do you do when you go away? Oh. Like there's, there's nobody around. And I just, <laughs> I, I'd love to hear a little bit more about like the downsides of it when you are the one actually fulfilling yes. that piece. Well, you learn that the hard way, right? Like, so I didn't know the first time that you go away and the orders have to be filled that you can actually kind of shut it off or put it on pause. And so what would happen is an order would come in and I'm like phoning my assistant or I, and what I learned to do is have them have a bunch at their house. And so if something came in, I would just, you know, fo I would take a screenshot, forward it and they would send it out. But you know, all you have to do is go, what? Like you're caught. And the reason why you want to be prompt with it is because eventually when you sell and I, I don't recall off the top of my head, maybe it was like 50 within the month or something, you can move to prime status if you fulfilled them. It was like you had to sell a certain number. And when you're on prime, there are people that shop 
strictly prime. So you get a little bit of a better visibility. People are more apt to buy it. Yeah. And I think that that's very important for people to even understand, which is if you're going to do it solely on your own by fulfilling them, which is totally fine, that there's definitely a lot of things you still need to pay attention to if you're going to be away, like you said, if you have like, I mean, to ha I mean, and not everyone's going to have an assistant or somebody else that can hold stock. So if you're missing that, that piece, you know, um, then you, I think you can, I think you can like shut sales for a little bit of time. Like you just shut it off for the week and you come back on and turn it on. Like you might say, oh, we're restocking inventory or it's something, you know, you might put it down like that. Yeah. I'm sure they probably have to have some kind of fail safe yeah. in there so that you're yeah. not getting dinged as the merchant. If you're not at, if you're mm -hmm. on vacation and you can't fulfill it. Um, right. But then finding a company, like you just said, that can actually go in and do this. So. So like you said, they have, they have a login then are they are, they're getting the, like, how are you monitoring even what they're doing? Uh, I don't know how I'm, I'm actually monitored. I mean, there's sales <laughs> like this. Hmm. They, I see, I know I get a notification and that's how you set that up when you're, um, putting your book up or whatever you put up, you can get, every time there's a sale, you get the email the notification, the tech, whatever it is. And so I will then go in. In the beginning, when we first started working together, I would go in and just make sure it was fulfilled the next day. I still kind of do it sometimes just because it's like mother hen. You yeah. just want to make sure they're doing it, but they, they always are doing it. Like they've never not done it. And it's very liberating. I will say that. They, they keep saying, when are you going to send us your decks, the decks that you have left over, and then we'll just fulfill it from there. And and that's when I said, I don't know, you know you're you pay by, I guess, the number of pallets. It must be that way because we're through. It's interesting because we just finished the first pallet and I have one more there and all of a sudden my monthly fee is like half, half as much. Yeah. And I went, I didn't even expect that. That's great, you know. Yeah, that's good. Are, are you going to send the decks there or? I don't think I am because the decks don't just don't have the same volume. Any, I mean, I, I, I do get deck sales, but it's not quite the same volume. So. But I think that I think that's such a great um, service that you found um, mm -hmm. because it really does. It gives you that time back so that you don't have to actually worry about that whole fulfillment piece. And th exactly. that's that's where a lot of people get stuck, especially with smaller products. If they're not going with, um, you know, somebody that's helping them do hybrid services where it, then it's it becomes a whole other product. You know, it goes out in a different way and they have to do it on their own. It's just understanding the different options. I think Amazon is great that it gives people those different levels of ownership over it. We have another client that does the fulfilled by Amazon. So when okay. we talk with her, we'll, we'll be learning about those ins and outs because just like you said, there's that one's a lot harder to get into. There's a lot more um, hoops that you have to kind of jump through to get it all set up. But it sounds like fulfilled by merchant. It's a little bit easier and less stipulations to get in. And and also then to you have more control over the fulfillment of that option that of those products. Now with the warehouse, like say you wanted to have special packaging or you wanted to include other things, would they kind of do that for you too? They would, but that would be at an additional charge. So I just don't like I I tend to not do that. Like when I fulfill it here, when I fulfill the decks here, there's definitely more of a personal touch to it. When you get it from them, it's as if you were just you know it was sent a package. Does Amazon, when it's fulfilled by merchant, do they have any specific rules around the type of like packaging that you have it in or? Cause they're not, it's not actually going through their warehouse. I know that that's another thing that they're very strict on. If it's a fulfilled by Amazon product that they, they have a lot of stipulations around that, but now you have a little bit more freedom. Yeah. I mean, we did personally just on this, not, not everybody does it. Part of why I shrink wrapped each one of them, each book comes shrink wrapped, um, as do the decks, because I really didn't want anything getting sent back, like it's dirty, it's ripped, it's whatever, like, you know, that it's just a protective, you know, for the, that I'd rather spend the money there, like for a little peace of mind, than have to send a replacement. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the things that we, we make sure that our authors do for these types of products, the ones that aren't going through Amazon, because to be honest, Amazon actually doesn't like shrink wrap. They actually charge oh. you to take the shrink wrap off. 
Um, so if you've ever noticed, you get a book in the mail from Amazon and there is no shrink wrap on it. We deal with those a different way when we send them to those other types of distributors. Um, we have them like interleaved, like in, like we have a sheet that goes in between each one to keep right. it from scuffing. But um, I always tell people, if you're going to be fulfilling this on your own, I don't care. Go for the shrink wrap because yeah. it's it's helped. Um, we had a client like she sent me a her book and it sat out in the rain. And luckily the books were fine because they were shrink wrapped. Like, but the mm -hmm. packaging was all damaged and everything. But the the book stayed okay. So I always I'm a big proponent of of that. And that's definitely something that you know, if you're fulfilling it on your own, I suggest doing. I've had that same scenario when they send me, like they come in boxes of 18 is just the size of what I get. That box is sat out in the rain and it's all wet, but you know, there's extra cardboard and they're all shrink wrapped. The books were fine. So one other thing I wanted to just kind of touch on is like I mentioned earlier, you have a shop with a bunch of different, different products. So not only do you have these physical products, a deck, you have a cell, you know, a, um, KDP print on demand, you have a hardcover book, but then you also have other products that you've created and you sell them on your website. Uh, mm -hmm. So tell us how you are fulfilling those. That's a, that's a whole other type of process. And that's a fulfilled by yeah. Susie that's a <laughs> in general. So a lot of, you know, I have clients that are local and I have clients, you know, around the country that are the you know, customers, I should say at that point, those are customers versus the clients that I coach. If they're in person, they're always pretty like, just bring it to class. Just bring it when I see you next. Like they're kind of okay. But in general, I'd like to send them out. Um, and I've got t-shirts and magnets and, you know, all sorts of things. And they, similar to the decks, you just weigh it, you know, I, I'll use stamps.com in that case. Yeah. I've got their, you know, the labels just come out. You buy shipping labels, you know, two to a sheet. It, it's got the barcode, the whole thing you go in and then you just drop it off at the, at the post office and you don't even have to wait in line. They'll be like, they just scan it, give you a receipt. It's great. Yep. And all that's being sold on the website. So mm -hmm. in everything, everything is linked on the website and it just goes to where, wherever you're selling it, you'll get notifications then. Correct. Correct. So, right. Even though you'll see, you know, sometimes you'll see the, oh, although that, the book on my website is a merchant fulfilled because I do have some specials that I do that Amazon, even with the coupon codes, you would think it's easy. It's really not as easy or user friendly. So I just go, all right, you know, when the specials happen, they have to kind of come to my website to get that. Got it. And so, um, can you, you can, can you do coupons then? With yes. The, oh, you can. With you can but then they have, it's a certain, like you can't, it can't just be anything. And if somebody else has used them, so it gets a little wonky and it has to be eight characters or it was, it might, it might've switched, you know, eight characters, no more, no less. And so, you know, you're trying to come up with creative yeah. answer for that one. Creative code names. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But that's, I didn't know that you could do that. So that is something that I am learning because, um, like I said, there's so many little nuances to each of their services that it's, yes. it's quite interesting to like know, like everyone has almost like a little piece of the puzzle, which is why I wanted us to chat because I feel like this is just one piece of the Amazon um, puzzle that, that needs to be figured out if you're going to be using them. And, you know, there's... You know, there's other online services aside from Amazon as well. So I think that it's just interesting how people are solving this problem of distribution and trying to get it out there to their their customers. And everyone loves that Amazon Prime. And if you can get Prime with the merchant ID, I think that that's, that's really great as well. Mm -hmm. So great. in terms of you know, the experience that you've had, like, are there any downsides even with this new um, service that you have for the book? Um, I think the downside is really how much you're willing to push, right? We all want to believe there's a field of dreams. If we build it, they will come. But it is a lot of marketing. It is a lot of pushing. It is a lot of promoting. And I guess when you spend a lot of money to have a distributor do a bunch of that, like I have a friend that um, has a book and paid for a company to do that. And they're launching in stores everywhere and all of it, you know, it could be like one or two per store all over the place. It appears right that it's a much bigger deal. Do I know if it's successful? I'm not sure, but I could see that a lot of the heavy lifting was taken off of her hands. If yeah, that, makes that sense. is, if you're going to be going the fully self-fulfilled route, even if it is with a warehouse that can 
fulfill as well. It's that, yeah, there's the marketing side of everything and just getting getting eyes on the product is a whole other piece of the puzzle as well. It's a big piece of the puzzle. Yeah. So you want to almost start thinking of that, build your list or, you know, old school ways, you know, do you have any get into the press, you know, locally, nationally, however, whatever that is. That's a, that's a whole other aspect. So where are you going from here? Where are you taking the products next? So that's a good question right now. I'm not sure. Cause I always say I'm always pregnant with the next idea. What's the next idea? I'm not sure. So me, Molly goes, am I going to have another kid? But, um, <laughs> I, I kind of see the whole love is concept expanding and I was inspired by someone else who was talking about diversity and inclusion and what they did with this kind of a postcard campaign where they just sort of left these postcards out and was asking a provocative question and they were getting the responses and then from there took it to what was next. And I kind of have a feeling like that feels congruent. So I'm not sure, but maybe that's that's kind of what's next. And if not that, then we'll be talking about something else. Yeah. Well, I think that sounds really interesting. I can't wait to learn more because this whole love is line that you have. It's it, well, it's the feel the love, the feel the feel love, the love yeah. line, mm -hmm. and then the love is book is a piece of that puzzle. And um, as I was even flipping through it uh, again, because I love it so much, it is. It's so inspiring, and um, I do think that now, uh, more than ever, um, I think that people need to be reminded of of love and how to love being loved, um, understanding what it is for different people because it means different things. So I think yeah. this is just a, a great a great product and I love the idea of even just random acts of what is love to you because it's right I think it'll be interesting to see what comes from that so so Susie um, thank you for being on the show and chatting through all of these things you know people have so many questions around it and I think this will help uh, just kind of explain this one piece of the fulfillment puzzle for people Mm -hmm. um, I would love for you to let everyone know where you're at, where they can find you, your different handles, um, and uh, so that they can feel the love that is Susie. <laughs> Choosing love over fear. That's what it's all about. Um, they can, you can find me. If you type in Susie Mordo, you're going to get it all. I'm on Facebook as, as Susie Mordo, both personal and business. I'm on Instagram, Susie Mordo. M-O-R-D-O-H, really, that's, it's an unusual spelling, so you get a lot of it, um, or SusieMorda.com. Perfect. Well, Susie, I hope you have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Me and too. I can't wait to I can't wait to see you soon. So I can't wait. Bye. Feel the love. Me too. Exactly. This was great. Thank you so much for having me, and I hope it helps. Any questions, you always know where to find me. Thanks, Susie. Thank you.